tell me please, when you first started working with the knife, how old were you? I was about 15 years old and uh, I was learning karate and uh, we were taught how to defend against, uh, defend against knife, but I thought it would be better if I learned how to use the knife. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I asked my teacher if uh, he would teach us how to use the knife as part of our self-defense instead of just defending against the knife. What pushed you to start teaching knife fighting? Uh, well, I'm Filipino and uh, the Philippines is a blade culture and uh, for many years when I was learning karate, I ignored my my cultural roots in the martial arts. So I decided to seek out a teacher in the Filipino knife and blade arts to teach me about my own culture's martial knife techniques. Could you mind to share with us about your system that you are teaching? Okay. Well, I teach two system. I teach an art called Doce Pares Escrima. And I also teach a mixed art uh, that is called uh, very simple <laughs> Filipino Martial Arts Academy. It's a blend of Kali and uh, Doce Pares Escrima and Indonesian Tenchak Silat. Mm -hmm. And uh, we take the ideas from all of those three systems and, uh, and I blend it together so that way my students can learn uh, a well-rounded martial art because sometimes you know if you only use knife sometimes you get stuck by relying only on the knife so what if the what if they get too close well then you can't do anything with knife right so you have to learn how to use other parts of your body to help you while you're using the knife and not just rely only on the knife so uh, that's uh, that's why I blend those three systems together. Could you mind to share how you start teaching your students? Um, well, in for beginners, do you mean like new student? Uh, okay. Um, usually with beginners, I start them off by just giving them knife, <laughs> you know, wooden knife, not real knife, and most times the student. They say, oh, knife already? That's, that's so strange. But I tell them, you know, no need to be afraid of, of the knife because it's like any kind of tool, any tool. You know, like scissors, you know how to use scissors, you're not afraid of scissors. Knife is the same thing. So we, I teach them very basic movement. I teach basically that there's only five angles of attack one two three four five that's it you take those angles and apply them to the head area or the torso area or leg area they don't have to worry about remembering 100 techniques only five and they learn how to apply those five angles with slashing or cutting or stabbing and if they can do that then it becomes a lot easier for them to learn more difficult techniques so I start them with those five very simple uh, angles of attack and very basic footwork and that's how I start the beginners can you tell us uh, do you have certain tactics and strategy in your system well in the, the curriculum that I teach um, the only strategy that I tell my students is to fight as if you're very small. I'm very small. I'm only five foot tall. So I cannot rely on strength like the big men can, right? So my, my strategy for my students is to have the mindset of you have to survive. You must survive, right? No matter what. So, and that's hard sometimes 
for some students because, you know, it's just difficult for them to, to, to have that sense of like uh, animal kind of uh, attitude. Some people, oh, they too nice or, you know, they want to be very peaceful, but it's very hard for some people to have an animal instinct, right? So I teach them that, hey, it's okay to have that, ah, that animal instinct. And most importantly, to remember that it's either you or them that will survive. And who's it going to be? Who? Do you want to survive? Who's it going to be? So you have to have more, um, sorry, my computer got in the way. Uh, you have to have more want to live than the other person trying to hurt you. Um, and also you must be unpredictable, unpredictable. Everyone expects this kind of movement uh, from someone who plays with knife. You must be very unpredictable, very very quick and uh, very and keeping your uh, your movements very simple I have five uh, I have several uh, ideas that I teach my students when you have to defend yourself with knife or not number one you have to distract your opponent make them think about something else number two you have to keep it simple no fancy, no fancy, fancy. You must keep it very simple for you because when you're stressed out, when you're panicking, very hard to think about fancy, fancy. Uh, number three, uh, you must hit or strike or slash very hard, as hard as you can. Um, and uh, number four, you have to uh, make sure that you finalize you must make it final. If that means you kill them, then okay. But you have to make it final. Make sure they cannot attack you anymore. And if my students can remember those things, then it will help them greatly. How do you think? What pushed the person to start working with the knife? Well, it, it, you, me or anybody else? Anybody. Okay, anyway, well, you know, some people, they don't like the violence. So sometimes, sometimes people not like, not like getting into the knife. However, so usually with the people that I meet, it's people that have been threatened with knife that come to me and they say, oh, I want to, I want to learn back to what I was saying. When someone gets attacked by knife, they usually come to me um, to learn knife because they're, they're scared it might happen again. Um, although we know that the possibility of them being attacked by a knife exactly like that again, probably very slim, but they still have the fear, right? So that's what usually pushes people to come to me. Um, other people however, that come to me, they, <laughs> they want to learn knife just because they think it's cool. But most people, they, they've already gotten threatened by knife or already attacked by knife or have a friend or loved one attacked by knife and they want to learn how to defend and use knife. Is the psychological preparation is important uh, for the knife fighting? I believe so, yes psychological preparation as i mentioned earlier you have to be willing to have that animal reaction animal instinct to fight like a tiger to fight like a bear um almost like a tiger protecting its babies you must have that um and some people find the violence of using the knife very scary and uh, I believe you have to prepare yourself to shut yourself off from the fear of being cut because you will be cut in a knife fight no matter what. I don't care how good somebody thinks they are. You're going to get you're going to get a little bit hurt. But if you fight very strong, 
like an animal, like a tiger um, or something like that, then you actually worry more about what you're going to do to the other person, not worry about what they do to you because that will mess up your thinking. So yes, you must prepare yourself um, and not think that you're bulletproof or cut proof. That's, that's, a, that's a very common thing that I find with some people in knife fighting. They say to themselves, oh, I learned knife. Now I'm very tough. You know, we can't think like that because then, then that's when you get hurt. So, yes, you must prepare yourself mentally to be able to take the cuts and accept that and to be able to hurt someone and possibly kill someone as long as you know it's in defense of your life. It's hard for some people, but I do believe you have to, you have to prepare yourself mentally. Today we have such a situation, for example, one person, he is learning for some uh, knife fighting in the gym for 3-5 years. But after he faced real situation on the street and he doesn't know what to do, he just run away. So why does it happen? How do you think? That is, uh, that is what I call being, being good at school, but not good at practical application. I see that a lot. Uh, karate tournament, for example. They look very good doing their movement in the tournament, or they look very good doing their sparring, their point, their point uh, fighting for trophy. But what they don't understand is in the street, no trophy, no judges, no nobody to say stop. You know, that's illegal. You cannot do that. In the street, there's no rules. So sometimes when people learn the knife, they get too confident in what they think they know. In real life, knife fight or any fight, any fight is very ugly. It doesn't look good. <laughs> It doesn't look pretty mm -hmm. like a tournament or in the classroom. So what I suggest that people do is realize that, yes, you can train to look pretty, to look good, because, it, because that's important, too. You want to be able to make sure that your movements are very precise. However, you must also, with your fellow students, you must also spar in a more realistic way and to acknowledge what weaknesses you have. If all you do is say, oh, I look good, I win all trophies, I, I win tournament, it's not good enough. You have, to, you have to train realistically. I think that's why that happens, where, oh, knife fight, oh, I run away, don't know what to do. It's because they haven't trained a more realistic, in a more realistic fashion. How do you think, why today we have such a situation when we have so many people that willing to teach knife fight? That's a very good question. Some people tend to teach the art more for culture. Some people will teach the art more for realistic application. So it depends on the teacher that you choose. The teacher that you choose, there's nothing wrong with either one. If you want to learn the art for the culture, that's okay. But you have to realize that if all you learn is the art, you might not gain the skills for realistic application. However, if you uh, go to a teacher that teaches the real kind fighting, um, that's good too. Um, it depends on what the student wants, because not all students want how to learn knife for self-defense. Some people just want to do it for fun. So, you know, but for the people that want to learn for a real fight, you must seek out that teacher that is willing to teach you the, the, real, the realistic and the truth about being in a fight. I've only been in two very dangerous fights. All the other kind of fights were, you know, in the 
in the tavern or in the bar where someone tried to pick me up or someone tried to, you know, some man tried to mess with me or whatever. And that's okay. I just meh, go away, go away. But only two real life or death situations. And it's very different than in the school. So I'm lucky to have been taught by someone who has been in real situations and has taught me that the streets are real, that it's not video game, that it's not play, it's not tournament. Um, but some people, you know, not so lucky. Some people just learn the art and unfortunately they get hurt. But it's up to the student to really know what they want and to seek out that teacher that teaches them the realistic blade application if that's what they want to learn. Do you have certain criteria according to which you can understand who is the real master and who is not? I, I tend to look at not only their personality, uh, but also how much, how much they brag, how much they boast. If they boast a lot, if they brag, oh, I teach you realistic self-defense, blah, blah, blah. If they brag too much about what they can teach, I, that's when I have to step back and say, oh, why are they bragging so much? You know, because sometimes people, when they boast too much, they probably don't know much. <laughs> so, you know. Instead, what I look for is I look at the teacher's movement. I, if I can ask, can you show me an example? Um, I look at their movement, and I feel, I try to feel where, where they are coming from. I try to feel their, their passion for the art, and, and I ask them, why, why is this type of, type of instruction important to you? This is violent. Why do you teach it? And if they say, well, it's because it's very cool and I'm the best, well, then they're probably not a good teacher. However, if they say, this is what's needed today, we need to defend ourselves today, not the movies, that's when I know that they're probably a good teacher, not brag about themselves. Could you mind to share with us five main principles that underlines in your system? Well, I kind of um, I kind of explained them a little bit earlier. When you fight, you must keep it simple. <laughs> you, you have to keep it simple. Uh, but let me start from the beginning. Number one, okay, distract, distract your opponent. If, if that means just saying something like, "Oh, please don't hurt me," you know, make make the other person confused. If that means spit at them, throw your change, uh, hit them in the nose, anything to distract them first, number one. Because as long as you can focus and they have no focus, you have a little bit of, little bit of advantage. Number two, you have to keep it simple. Use very basic techniques. Like I said, no fancy stuff. Number three, you have to hit very hard. You have to hit very hard. Not only hit hard with your knife or your fist or your kick, but also you have to be very hard in your mind. You have to be very committed. Number four, you have to finalize. Make sure they can't hurt you anymore. And finally, number five, you have to know your escape route. You have to know where can I run to get help? Where, what can I do now? to escape. So as long as the student remembers those five things and practices in their head, every scenario that they can think of in their head and play these scenario in their mind, then it prepares them a lot more. Nobody knows how a knife fight will go. Nobody knows how even fist fight will go or even just a argument with our with our words no one knows how it goes but as long as you remember those five tactics you you have a better chance at surviving we know that you are teaching and sticks and knives 
Uh, can you tell us, do you have any distinguishes between sticks and knives when you are teaching? The only difference is, oops, I can hear myself. The only difference is that with stick, the stick is a bludgeoning weapon. It's a, a, a blunt impact. You can't cut with a stick. However, with blade, you can. But the movements are same. Um, the other difference is your distance. Stick much longer, 28 inches or 24 inches or 6 inches. Knife, normally about anywhere between 6 to maybe 12 inches long that we can carry in the United States. Um, but you have to know the distance. But the movement is the same. Other than that, no difference. You just have to know that you can't cut with the stick. And uh, with the knife, there are some things you can't do. For example, with the stick, we can grab the stick. Knife, you can't grab your blade. You cut yourself. So those are, right now, the, those are some of the things that I can think of that distinguish stick and knife. But the movements are same. What is a knife for you? The knife gives me the sense of, if believe it or not, it gives me a sense of peace. Because when you carry a knife, every time I carry a knife, knife or sword, I respect the damage it can cause. And it allows me to think to myself, wow, I can damage someone with this. I can kill someone with this. However, the knife itself is not what kills because the knife not going to just jump up on its own and stab somebody. It's the person that carries it. So if I want to live in peace, that tells me that I have to be peaceful too and to try to avoid fights or avoid violent confrontation when I can. Um, but I'm still confident that if violence comes to me, that I can answer with the appropriate amount of violence. Um, so that's why the knife brings to me a sense of peace, because I respect the weapon. I respect the damage it can cause. And since I want to not hurt anyone, I have to work on myself a bit more. That's what gives me peace, that, uh, that desire to be compassionate, to be peaceful, and to be empathetic. Mm -hmm. So yeah, peace. <laughs> How do you think does the knife has some future in 21st century? I believe so, because, you know, 1,000 years ago, I'm sure they wondered the same thing. <laughs> and the knife still continues today, even after thousand years ago, 400 years ago, 100 years ago, the thing that differs is how we fight and how we think with the knife. Long time ago, like in Japan, everybody fought with their swords and their knife with honor. Everything was, was very honorable, honorable dueling, honorable fighting. Today, no, nobody, <laughs> nobody fight like that anymore. Um, but in the 21st century, yes, I do believe that there is a future. I see that the sense of, the sense of honor is coming back. There are, here in the United States, there are, uh, gatherings where people, they fight with training knife, but very little protection. All they wear is mask, no glove, no padding. And you fight, full contact. At the end, you're friends. You're bleeding, or you get hurt, you break your hand. But no matter what, you and your partner that you fought with, for real, you're still friends. That's a sense of honor. It's coming back now, I, I hope. But um, I, I think that the want or the desire for anyone to learn knife fighting in the 21st century. Yes, 
it's always going to be there. It's the 21st, as the days go by, as the years go by, so much violence. People get mad for no reason and then, you know, get mad, shoot people. Get mad, I cut you. So we have to protect ourselves against that. So yes, there's a future for people wanting to learn knife fighting and there's a future for people that teach the knife fighting. What you can recommend to the people that just decided to start working with a knife? I recommend that people, when they start lesson, no matter who teacher is, to not have specific expectation. So, for example, when they go in and learn from a teacher, you don't want to expect, oh, I become unbeatable, or, oh, I become master, you know? You don't want to go in with that. Your attitude, however, must be keep your mind open. Even if something doesn't seem, if it seems weird or strange, you've got to trust the teacher. If the teacher really wants to teach you to fight for real, you have to trust the teacher. There's always a reason why they teach you something. Always. So you have to go in with an open mind. Number two, you must be willing to work hard. Real fighting not like the movies where fight, 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 it's over in four seconds, winner. It's not like that. So you have to be willing to work hard, very hard. Must also be willing to probably get a little bit injured. Even a wooden knife can hurt a lot. So you have to be willing to do that. Those are the three things I tell my people when they learn stick or knife or any kind of weapon, sword, spear, anything i tell them you have to be willing to hurt yourself you have to be willing to work hard have to be willing to trust what i say so the last question is can you share with us do you have in your system something that distinguish it from other all systems in the world uh not really um the only thing that i can say would distinguish my system from any anybody else's is just how I move. Everyone moved different. So, you know, I might move differently than my master. I have to. I'm built differently. I'm smaller. I'm not as big. So I have to move the way I move. The movements, no matter what style, are always going to be universal. There's only so many ways to move the human body can move. I can't invent anything more because we all move the same. So the only thing different though from system to system to system is the, how the teacher teaches and what they focus on. Some knife fighters, they focus on short blade. Some knife fighters, they, they focus two blades. Some long blade, short blade. But the movements, the principles are universal. So, no, I can't say that what I do is, is different and sets me apart from anybody else because that would be very egotistical for me to say. The only thing that I think is different is just how I move from everybody else.